Good morning, everyone, and happy Thursday. My name is Nick Morrow with Occupy Fantasy. You can find me on Twitter at Nick Morrow DFS. As always, I'm here to help you break down today's NBA DFS slate on both DraftKings and FanDuel. We have a six-game slate tonight, locking at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Um, as is always the case, please like the video. Also, click subscribe to the channel. That helps us climb those YouTube algorithms and get more free content like this out to you. Additionally, if you're not already a member at Occupy Fantasy, check the links in the description below. Um, as a member, you get access to the model you see here where you can sort by ownership percentages, value for both sites. You get our OF index, which is just going to help show you the best plays on a given slate. We have a single lineup builder and multi-entering lineup builder. Um, we also have a Discord server filled with DFS pros to help you build your lineups and help you select the right contests. We also have a 30 minute window leading into each lock where we're answering lineup specific questions for you. Um, so yeah, check the links. Uh, one of the best sites in the business for sure. Very happy to be here breaking down the slate with you today. Um, so yeah, I like to go game by game. We have just six games here. I think I can do it pretty quickly. Um, I'm going to click between both DraftKings and FanDuel. I know we have viewers who like to play on each site. Um, if you see me looking up to the right, that's because I have multiple monitors here. I'm going to be looking at the injury report as well as the spread, game totals, etc. Things like that as we kind of walk through these things um, and these games rather. Um, okay, so first game on the slate here, I'm going to go in the order of the injury report. And this is on NBA.com if you guys need it. We also have injury um, reports on our site as well. But this one just came out a few minutes ago. Um, so yeah, first game on the slate, we have the Cleveland Cavaliers at the Indiana Pacers. The Cavs are five point favorites on the road in Indiana. Um, they've been great, obviously playing very good basketball so far to start the season. I'm um, looking at the injury report here. No major injuries. Um, we have Dean Wade and Dylan Windler both out for Cleveland. Uh, Robin Lopez is out for Cleveland here as well. So as far as the Cavs go, obviously, as is often the case, both Mitchell and Garland are fine tournament plays. It's really tough to want to prioritize them over some of the other pay-up options we have at guard, um, just because they do share that backcourt usage. Um, but I do think they're both viable. Um, don't mind Jared Allen here, Evan Mobley as well. It's almost a similar situation as the guards, though, in that you're probably going to get a really good game out of one, maybe not so great a game out of the other. So you're kind of going to want to pick and choose your spots if you're going to Cleveland. I will say this, though. This is a great matchup for them. Um, we're looking at a 223.5 point game total, which is actually high for a Cavs game this season. Um, and they're playing a soft defense, and they're going to be paced up. So they really check all the boxes here. Um, as far as value goes, there's really nothing that jumps up off the page for me when it comes to um, Cleveland. Just sorting by value in the model as things stand. I mean, we're seeing Lamar Stevens pop towards the top on DK at just 3,200. I don't mind him if he starts. He's just been really tough to trust. He's very inconsistent. Um, priced out of consideration for me over on FanDuel at 4,800. But yeah, keep an eye on the starting lineup. For me, it's really the guards. I do like Garland. I do like Mitchell. I think... Um, both Allen and Mobley are fine. I'm not rushing to play any of these wings. If we see Kevin Love starting, I think he's okay here as kind of a boom-bust value play if you're playing a bunch of lineups, but it's really tough for me to say there's any true priorities on Cleveland today. Um, but yeah, those, those big four, they're all kind of viable. Um, over on the Pacer side of things, we do have Tyrese Halliburton currently listed as questionable. Um, so obviously if he's out, that's going to be a massive trickle-down effect to the rest of the roster. Um, but the biggest piece of value we'd get would probably come in TJ McConnell. Um, I would expect McConnell to start a point guard if Halliburton can't go here. Um, Halliburton seems to be on the injury report every day, though. Um, he has a right knee bruise. That sounds like something he should be able to play through to me. Um but yeah, I'll obviously keep an eye on that. It is the first game on the slate in the 7 o'clock window, so we will have this news. If Halliburton's out, TJ McConnell's going to become one of the best value plays on the slate. We're also going to take a look at guys like Buddy Heald. Um, Andrew Nemhard's been a lot better lately. I do like him a lot. Then Mathurin in large field tournaments off the bench. 
very boomer bust, uh, very scoring dependent, but we have seen ceiling games out of him. Um, then in the front court, I don't mind Miles Turner. This is just a very difficult matchup, and this kind of rings true for this whole Pacers team. Uh, Cleveland's been one of the best defensive teams in basketball this season, so I'm really not rushing to get to anyone here. I don't mind Jalen Smith as kind of a mid-range value play if everyone is in and healthy, but it's really tough for me to want to prioritize anything. Um, I will say Buddy Heald has been taking a lot of shots at just 6200 on FanDuel and priced similarly on DK. I think he's an okay option um, but really it's Halliburton if he's in I think is a strong tournament play um, and if he's out TJ McConnell is going to look great Nemhard going to look great but it's really tough to count on that I think he should be able to play through this knee bruise um, so really no priorities for me from this game I will say I do like the Cleveland side better they're being paced up where the um, Pacers are being paced down no pun intended and yeah good game total here Close enough spread. It should be competitive. Um, but I do expect Halliburton to play, but definitely keep an eye on that piece of news. Um, next game on the slate, we have the Charlotte Hornets at the Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, the Thunder are just one-point underdogs on the road in Charlotte. Um, Charlotte's been really bad this season, looking for their 10th win here. Uh, Kelly Oubre is listed as doubtful. Dennis Smith Jr., questionable. Um, Cody Martin's still out. Nick Richards is out as well. Um, so we are getting a little bit of value maybe um, in this Charlotte team. More likely, though, we're just going to see those extra minutes absorbed by the starters. Guys like P.J. Washington are going to see an increase in both minutes and usage. Mason Plumley as well. He's been boom, and bust, boom or bust all season, but I don't mind him here. Uh, Terry Rozier, if DSJ is out, I think that's going to be a boost for him. And then Kelly Oubre, who absorbs a lot of usage, him being out is going to benefit all of the Charlotte starters. Um, we're going to see, excuse me, more usage for Gordon Hayward. Uh, LaMelo Ball should look better here as well. Um, but just sorting by ownership right now, we're not seeing anyone really popping towards the top on DK for Charlotte except for Plumlee and Rozier, um, who I don't mind. I'm not really forcing either. But then LaMelo over on FanDuel where he's just 9K flat. Um, he's kind of a priority for me over there. So I do like P.J. Washington. I don't mind McDaniels in that front court. Uh, with Nick Richards out, those backup center minutes are going to those two big fours. Um but yeah, it's an okay spot. Uh, Thunder haven't been great defensively, but they're not terrible either. Um, 239 game total, though, that certainly tells us that we're going to want pieces from this game. Uh, for me, I'd like to get the ball on FanDuel. Um, Hayward on both sides. Um, and then you could kind of mix in Terry Rozier in the front court pieces um, in Plumlee and P.J. Washington. But yeah, I mean, as things stand, they don't look bad at all on Charlotte. Um, over on the OKC side, um, we are dealing with Poku, who is out, um, has a really bad leg injury. Jeremiah Robinson Earl is out as well. So there is going to be some opportunity in this front court for a player like Mike Muscala. I imagine he's going to be one of the more popular value plays on the slate. Uh, just zooming in here. He's coming off a game where he had 35 fantasy points, only played 21 minutes, um, but we saw 19 points, six rebounds, two assists, and a block. I mean, if Muscala becomes chalk, that's going to be tough to want to get excited about in tournaments, but I think in cash games as things stand, we're kind of lacking that value we need. Um, so he's going to pop as one of the best value plays on the slate. I do like him here. Um, I do imagine that ownership continues to climb. Uh, we also see kind of trickle down in usage to guys like Lou Dort, Jalen Williams. I don't mind them as secondary plays. Neither are really strong offensive players consistently. Um, but I will say, if Muscala starts at center, he's going to be tough to avoid his value unless we get more to open up. So keep an eye on that for sure. Um, sorting by FanDuel value, we also see Lou Dort popping towards the top. Um, he's actually cheaper on DK though. Um, so the thing with Lou Dort, obviously a talented basketball player. He's better Known for his defense, though, uh, which doesn't always um, correlate to DFS. I mean, on FanDuel, you're getting more points for blocks and steals. I do like him a bit better over there. Uh, but we really haven't seen many ceiling games out of him. So if Lou Dort's going to be popular, I think you can get away from him, maybe. Um, obviously, love SGA, one of the best guard plays on the slate, wherever you can afford him. This is a tremendous matchup for him. Uh, that Charlotte defense has been terrible. And Josh Giddy as a secondary option. If you can't afford SGA, don't mind getting to some Giddy at shooting guard. He's been really strong here as well. Definitely keep an eye on this starting lineup, though. Like I said, I think Muscala is probably going to start at center, and if he is, he's going to be very, very interesting. Uh, we could see Jalen Williams get starter um, run here as well. I don't mind him. He's just very inconsistent. More of a large field tournament play for me over there. Um, so moving into the 730 window now, we have the Boston Celtics hosting the Los Angeles Clippers. 
Celtics are six point favorites at home. Taking a look over on the injury report, um, no real major injury news for Boston. Gallinari, who's out for the year, is out. Um, and then there's nothing really major for the Clippers here as well. So what you're getting here are two healthy teams. I think they're both fine. Um, Tatum, obviously, anywhere you can afford him, he's solid. Much easier to get to on DK at only 10-3. 11K on FanDuel is a tough pill to swallow. Um, I'd rather get to Jalen Brown on FanDuel where he's only 8,800. Obviously not the same player as Tatum when it comes to fantasy production, but for the discount, he's similar. Um, so I do like these two guys a lot. I don't mind Marcus Smart. Uh, Robert Williams has been very boomer bust. Al Horford's been pretty boomer bust. So really it's the big two for Boston for me. Um, I like Jalen. I like Tatum where you can afford him. But yeah, they're tough to get to here. Um, then over on the Clippers side, we're seeing a healthy Kawhi, which is good to see Paul George as well. Um, again, there, there's nothing on this injury report for them right now that's going to tell me any of these guys are resting or sitting. But that's certainly a situation to keep an eye on. Ty Lu has been known to change his injury reports throughout the day. If one of those guys were to be ruled out, it would help the other. Um, it looks like we should have John Wall and Reggie Jackson both healthy here. Um, so it's going to be tough for me to want to prioritize either of them. Um, but yeah, Zubach, the one kind of value play popping for the Clippers. It is a decent matchup against Boston's front court. But if not rushing to get to him, he's been very inconsistent. He will be low on, though. He does have upside. So just from kind of a game theory angle, I don't mind Zubach here on either side. But he's certainly not a priority for me. Um, but yeah, Paul George is fine. Kawhi's fine. Just taking a quick look at these prices. Paul George, only 8,400 on DK. That's very appealing to me. I like him over there. Um, and then Kawhi, just floating around 7,800 to 8,200. He's starting to see his regular run of minutes. Um, <clears throat> so as that continues to be the trend with him, I do think we're going to see those minutes climb. So we are getting him at a bit of a discount here. Obviously a tough matchup, but at 8,200 and 7,800 on DK, I do like Kawhi a lot on both sides. Um, but yeah, two healthy teams, so it's tough to really prioritize anything here. Uh, we can move into the next game on the slate where we have... The Memphis Grizzlies at the Toronto Raptors. So the Grizzlies are three-point favorites on the road in Toronto, 228.5 point total. Another solid total game here. Uh, Grizzlies, let's see, nothing major. Still no Danny Green, obviously. David Roddy's out. Really nothing we have to worry about. Um, the big question here in this game is on the Toronto side. Fred Van Fleet is listed as questionable. Um, Precious Achua is questionable as well, as is Christian Coloco. Otto Porter Jr. is out. Um, but really, the Fred Van Fleet news is big because if Van Fleet's out, we're going to see extra usage for all the other starters in Toronto. That's going to make Barnes, OG, Siakam, Trent all look better. And then if Malachi Flynn seems to slip into the starting lineup with Van Fleet's sideline, he'd be a really solid value play here. He's up to 4900 on FanDuel, so really not a prior priority play for me over there. Um, sorting by value right now. We're really not seeing anything popping for Toronto. OG's getting up there on DK. I do like 6,400 for him over there. Uh, but if Van Fleet's out, all these guys are going to look a lot better. Uh, Siakam has had a lot of ceiling games this ceiling, <laughs> ceiling season. Um, I do like him here um, at likely low ownership. We see him at 10% on DK right now, only 7% on FanDuel. If no one's going to want to click him, I do think he's a really strong play here, even a tough matchup against Memphis. Um, if Van Fleet's out, I do expect those ownership numbers to climb, though. So as things stand, no major priorities for me here. If Van Fleet's in, I do like him a lot on DK. If he's out, all the other starters will look good. And if we do get Malachi Flynn sliding into that starting lineup, he would be a viable value play. Obviously, his fantasy point-per-minute rates kind of dip with all the other starters because he's not as relied upon for his offense. Um, but he's a fine value option on a slate where we really don't have many. Um, then over on the Memphis side, they're just kind of healthy. Um, I like John Moran. I always do. Uh, Desmond Bain has been back and healthy. He's fine. I'm really not rushing to get to him, though. He's still kind of finding his legs. Dylan Brooks, boom bust. Uh, scoring dependent, not someone I'm usually looking to target. Don't mind Jaron Jackson. If he could just stay out of foul trouble, he's a very appealing tournament play. It's just he hasn't been able to. Um, Steve Adams in the front court as well. So really, all the starters from Memphis, <clears throat> excuse me, look decent. The only one I'm really prioritizing is Jaw. No real value from this game yet, unless we get Fred Van Fleet ruled out. Um, so moving into the 8 o'clock window, we have the Knicks at the Spurs. The Knicks are five-point favorites on the road in San Antonio. Uh, 226 and a half point total here. Um, I know we do have some news we're waiting on. R.J. Barrett's out. Um, obviously, that's a big one. Jalen Brunson is questionable. 
I think he's going to be back tonight. If he is, I do like him a lot on both sides. 7,400 on DK, 7,700 on FanDuel. Tough matchup, um, but he's been carrying this offense when he's in there. Obviously, Julius Randle's going to look good here as well, but he's up at 9,500 on both sides. So Brunson's really the priority for me if he's in. If he's out, we're going to have to look to Randle. Uh, but with Barrett out, we have seen quickly getting the starts here. Um as well as Quentin Grimes, and it's interesting. We're seeing quickly getting more ownership on both sides. Look at this, over 50% on both sides. So if Brunson's in, I don't mind quickly, um, but that is way too high of an ownership for him. I would rather get to Quentin Grimes um, on both sides. He's been just as effective, and you're getting him at sub-5% ownership for a similar price. 6,200 on FanDuel is tough for me to get excited about, but we're paying 6K for quickly, so it, it makes sense to make that ownership pivot. Um, if Miles McBride were to start at point guard, I don't mind him. He just really hasn't been all that effective this season. Um, but yeah, it's interesting to see quickly as chalk here with Brunson in. If Brunson's out, I totally get it. I'll have a ton of him, but if Brunson is in, I mean, 50% for quickly is just crazy on a six-game slate, so I'd look to get different there. Um, but as always, Randall's solid, um, and that's really it for me on the Knicks side. Don't mind Mitchell Robinson as a boom-bust center play, um, but sorting by value, I mean, we're seeing Brunson popping as the value play here, which is interesting, um, and that's really it. Quickly, that crazy, crazy ownership. I don't mind it if Brunson's out again, but if Brunson is in, definitely keep an eye on that because he's going to be over-owned, and Quentin Grimes is your tournament pivot. Um, over on the Spurs side, Keldon Johnson's questionable. Devin Vassell, also questionable. So we're going to have to keep an eye on this one. Um, those are their two best players as far as like real basketball goes and usage for DFS purposes. Um, as things stand, we're really seeing no Spurs popping. Uh, we could use the model here to sort by team. Obviously, Keldon Johnson and Devin Vassell are the two best players here. If they are out, we're going to see guys like Trey Jones, Jeremy Sochan become very popular. Sochan only 4,800 on DK. Like him a lot there regardless, but at 5,900 on FanDuel, I think that's just recency bias. I mean, he's a talented player, um, but I don't know that he can consistently justify that price tag if Johnson and Vassell are both in. So certainly keep an eye on that. Um, but if those two are out, I mean, the, the starting lineup is going to matter big time here. I could see Josh Richardson getting the start. Um, who else? Uh, Keita Bates, Giop, we've seen start in certain situations with both of those guys out. He becomes a very intriguing value option. Um, Jakob Podol is interesting. He's been working his way back from injury. Um, let's see here. I think he's finally seeing his full run of minutes. No, he's still not even at 30 minutes. So really not rushing the potal, even if those guys are out. Don't mind Zach Collins is kind of a secondary option. But yeah, really tough to prioritize anything here unless we get the news that those guys are out, in which case Trey Jones would be kind of the top priority. Um, followed by probably Sochan on DK, Richardson, both sites. So the Spurs, very, very fluid situation, certainly one we have to keep an eye on. Um, pretty obvious, but if Vassell's out and Johnson's in, Johnson's an excellent play, and vice versa. If Johnson's out, Vassell's in, Vassell's going to be a great play. So need to keep an eye on that Spurs news. It is Greg Popovich. Uh, yeah, guy, guy can do anything he feels like, and it won't be surprising. So keep an eye on that starting lineup. Keep an eye on that injury news. Hopefully both those guys just play here. Um, but we have to wait and see. Uh, so moving into the final game on the slate, we have the Dallas Mavericks at the Houston Rockets. Only Deshaun Tate out for Houston as far as regular rotational players go. Uh, no Dorian Finney-Smith, Josh Green, or Maxi Kleber on the Dallas side. Um, we've seen some really strong games out of Christian Wood lately. I like him a lot on DK at 7,900. Totally reasonable over on FanDuel at 8,300. Uh, but how about Luka Doncic coming off a 100-point fantasy game? Uh, 60, 10, and 20. First to ever do that, I think, in NBA history. Just ridiculous, ridiculous performance. Um yeah, I think everyone's going to want to play him tonight. It is a 10.5 point spread here. I think Houston can keep this close. Um, no one on the injury report right now. They don't have to travel far. They're playing in their home state of Texas. So I do like Luka here. I think he's excellent anywhere you can afford him. But in order to fit him right now, we're going to need some more value to open up in some of those earlier games. So keep an eye on that. Um, but yeah, if you can get to Luka, obviously he's great. I like THJ. I like Spencer Dinwiddie as kind of secondary plays. Neither are really priorities for me. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, Luka has been amazing. Really tough to get away from him if you can afford him. Uh, and Christian Wood as well. Really 
effect of lately. Jason Kidd finally trusts him to stick into those regular rotational minutes. I think a big part of that is just Cleaver and DFS being out, uh, DFS being Dorian Finney-Smith. Um, but yeah, 12K for Luka on DK, 12-4 on FanDuel. Again, tough to get to, but if we get more value, he's certainly the best pay-up option on the slate. Um, so just to kind of go over things quickly, um, sorting by OF index, which is kind of a weight of raw point upside and price between the two sites, but more of an emphasis on upside. We're seeing Luki here kind of on a tier all his own. SGA is right behind him. Um, rating better than I'd expect him to in comparison to Luka. Um, but if you can use that discount, we don't get more value. I think he's a solid pivot. Um, LaMelo Ball's up there. Julius Randle, who I'd like better if Brunson's out. Um, if Brunson's out, Randle becomes a core play for me everywhere. Don't mind John Morant, Jason Tatum. Brunson, if he's in, looks good. Siakam at low ownership, really strong play. Christian Wood, Paul George, etc. All pretty obvious as things stand. Definitely keep an eye on the news. Uh, Mike Muscala is probably my favorite value play on both sites as things stand. Um, we're seeing quickly as chalk. I like him better on DK, but over 50% if Brunson's in, I'd rather go to Quentin Grimes. Even if Brunson's out, I could see going to Quentin Grimes. But quickly did finally look like a point guard when he got those minutes with Brunson out last game. So keep an eye on that. Don't mind Steven Adams' value at center. Um, the slate is just really lacking value. I mean, Eric Gordon at 3,400 on DK has some merit. Super scoring dependent, very much boomer bust. Um, but a fun slate overall. Six games, locks at seven, last game's at 8.30, so it's almost like a turbo slate. I think we should have some fun tonight. Um, definitely like the video. If you haven't already, please click subscribe as well. Help us to climb those YouTube algorithms. Sign up at Occupy Fantasy today. Follow me on Twitter at DFS. Let's have some fun tonight everyone and make some money. Good luck.